Okay, welcome to Sharp Cuts. We're here with two pretty special people. One, I don't know. Hey, I'll let you be the judge, listeners. Welcome. Um, we've got the Humana Pereira Di Humana. Huma we we still can't figure out what the plural of Humana Pereira is, but we've got both of them here: Melissa Humana Pereira and Felipe Humana Pereira. Um, both volleyball players, national team. Felipe is now coaching. Melissa, we got to start with you. We're on the journey to the Olympic Games. I think myself, Josh, I know you probably, well, maybe you guys talk more than I do, but curious how it's going. What's the outlook looking to the Olympics? Just give our viewers just a taste of what we can maybe expect. We're trying to get hype for you. So what's the uh, outlook here? Okay, let's see. We are, you know, we're in good spirits. We are <laughs> coming out. Um, <laughs> I mean, you should be. You're meddling at events and stuff. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, the last couple of events didn't go super smoothly, but that's okay because we're trending upwards and um, we're getting really excited. We have one more event left before the Olympics, but next week we leave uh, Canada and we are going to Europe uh, for a little training camp, a little tournament, and then it's Tokyo. So it's very, very soon. Um, the excitement is definitely building. There is very little time left and... Um, you know what? We're doing everything we can to be as prepared as possible to perform and produce that Olympic gold medal performance that we're all waiting for and we've been preparing for for the last four or five years now. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, we're going okay. we're going in with that goal and uh, we're doing everything we can to get it. So all of us supporting you, following you, Felipe's already getting jealous that we're just we're laying on thick early. I get it, buddy. But uh, all of us following you, um, cheering you guys on, you and your partner, Sarah Pavin. So the plan is you go do this event, training camp in Europe, and then right to Tokyo. Straight to Tokyo. Like, I'm packing my bags for a long time. Oh, Maybe. my goodness. So the bag pack that's happening soon is the Tokyo bag pack. It, it's the Tokyo bag pack. <laughs> Packing in general gives me a lot of anxiety. Put some this peanut butter in there. Peanut butter for sure. Yes. Um, one hundred percent with the peanut butter. I, you know me. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I always bring snacks. <laughs> with me. Subtle there. I don't. I don't know. Do you? If you don't, hey, follow Mel on Instagram. Plug me. It's, it's <laughs> Melissa Humana Paredes. Are you hoping for the overlay below in the screen? Yeah. You're hoping for that little <laughs> post effect. Uh, well, we'll see. I don't know. Right we might have to pull it out for Mel. <laughs> yeah, please do. But I, if you do follow me, you know, I love my snacks. So I bring all of the food with me. Um, yeah, it, it's a daunting pack, but a very exciting at the same time. Now, is the whole Amanda Paradas family going? Like, is there going to be, I know there's different rules. Felipe, are you going? Is Hernan going? Nope. No? No. All the above. No family at all. There is there's literally nobody going except for our immediate team. And even that had to get a little bit cut down just because of COVID and restrictions and um, accreditations. And oh, my gosh. That is heartbreaking. Josh, I now that I've asked them if they're going, please do not tell me you're going. No, I didn't. I didn't make the cut either. Okay, great. Oh, gosh, you think <laughs> if her hand's not going? I'm not going. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, sorry. Great. Not great. I mean, that came out wrong. I mean, bad news for you, Josh. I'm sorry. It's a bad situation all around. Forgive me. <laughs> We're all very excited, though. They'll be able to watch from home. And, um, yeah, I mean, it will be a different Olympic experience than I think we're all used to and where we're expecting or hoping. But well, sorry, least, Mel. I don't mean to cut you off, but we're all used to. I mean, only some of us in this call are used to the Olympic <laughs> experience. And, I mean, I'm not going to say any names, but I think only some of us really know what that's like. So, um <laughs> <laughs> you you've been felipe no uh, no no she's she's just rubbing it in <laughs> and josh have you been to the olympics no not yet garrett not yet see i have not as an athlete or a player or anything like let's, let's set the record straight but Wait, we, which one did you go to yeah we did go to the sydney olympics my uh my dad worked the event as i guess a match official or something and we were there so uh, we have a little bit of experience, but hey, it was down under mate. So uh, a little bit easier to go. That. That's awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, a little fun fact for you. Now, I, I, I think five years ago, I was probably planning to be at this Olympics with you, uh, Mal, but I don't think it worked out that way. Felipe, Why, what what, I do have to ask, sorry to transition so quickly, but we had a conversation on the call uh, a while ago, Mal, you might find this funny, where we had somebody on on the beach national team 
and for Canada. And we have a few, you know, there's some people coaching the beach national team. And this person said, yeah, we have no idea where Felipe is, what he's doing, if he's even alive. We, we haven't heard from him. So we have heard from him, but Felipe, what the heck, man, your team, they don't know where you're at. <laughs> I that was like episode three when he was like moving from BC to Ontario. Like no that excuse. Was like a long time ago. No it was excuse. Ago. I yeah no there was a, it was a super long period where a I had a lot of uh, loose ends to tie up out in BC. Like this this opportunity was kind of sprung upon me really quickly and the opportunity to coach with Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when you have Josh Nickel in the conversation, I mean, you you move across the country. You drop everything. Really? Yeah. I mean, I was okay. I mean, I would have <laughs> gone back for episode two later on. This yeah, I mean, I would have said, "Oh, Josh, jo okay, I'm actually going to stay here. I'm actually going to move further away." But I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, good for you. So, yeah, hey, how's it going, hey, Felipe? Josh, have you been in a session with Mel at all? In the, I guess Mel, you've been all over the world, so maybe not. But has that happened yet? So no, Garrett, I think the last time I saw Melissa was probably at Downsview, which isn't the greatest place. And she stops coming around because usually when she does, I ask her like 407 questions about stuff. Well, and maybe she probably you just gets stop. tired of answering them. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You got to just soak up that world champion knowledge. I don't know if our notes listeners knew, but, well, you know, you got a couple of world champions on the call. One of them at the senior level, the other at the junior level. We won't say who's, who's who there, but, uh, you know, you want to try to soak up as much knowledge as you can. But so is there maybe a time when, Felipe, you're running a practice that Mel is involved in? Not uh, not recently, no. Like, but is there going to be a time, I mean? Like, is, is, there, there in the future, be, yeah. like Mel comes home from the Olympics, they're training. Felipe, you're around. They're at the center. Could this happen? Well, 100%. When I was back in the day when I was playing in the in the good old days. There was a tournament in China where Mel and Sarah were there. Their coach was not, and me and my partner happened to be knocked out a little earlier than than they did. So we had some mm -hmm. time on our hands, and I was helping them warm up for every match. And they they ended up winning that tournament. So you know, I think there's a there's a feature there in terms of uh, some chemistry with <laughs> totally he, he stepped up. I think I gave you that gold medal. Did I not? <laughs> you let me hold it. Hold on. Oh, they man. won the medal. They won the gold medal at that tournament. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Felipe has been riding that the whole time. Hey, Josh, hey, I was at the tournament. We lost, but Hey, Mel won. I was there. Like, yeah, give me this I, job. I always take 10% credit for that one. 10%. You got to take at least 49. That's fully you, Felipe, at the time. That's hilarious. And I, I'll just say my impression early of you two is one of a lot greater support than I would say for some of the other siblings or we, we see in the volleyball Canadian community. I mean, it's a small community. We got a lot of volleyball families, right? The Imania Parada. Again, what is the plural the of plural. Imania Paredes? Like, I, I've always liked Humana Paredes. Mm, Paredes. I Humana Paradai. Per I mean, comment down below if you're still watching. Thanks for joining us. What you think the plural <laughs> of Imana Paredes is. Is it, is it, it? I don't know. But you guys seem to have it together where maybe some other volleyball families don't. Me and my brother, I mean, hey, if Reed's tossing in balls and we're in a practice, I, like, I'm not happy. He's not happy. <laughs> The Saxtons, it was kind of the same thing. Ben was talking about there in practice and Camille's like cheering for him on the side, trying to be nice, but he's pissed about it. I mean, you guys <laughs> seem to have it together. What, how, what is the deal there? That's so funny. I thought it was going to be maybe like a brother-sister versus brother-brother thing, but that um, Saxton anecdote proves that wrong. Um, <laughs> I think I think it is a combination of Felipe's patience um, and... Just his like chillness that really helps us stay strong and stay stay together. I'm not like super easy to deal with. I can be super annoying, um, <laughs> but I agree. I think somehow we've made it work, and I think maybe the the age difference is like maybe. it's like prime. We definitely three and a half years. When we lived together back when we were kids, we you know we could get on each other's nerves. There was a lot of fighting, but the second I moved out for university, way better, way better relationship. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so as soon That's as you stop case. spending so much time together, things improved, I guess. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, I will say I, I'm jealous, and I mean, that's that's a pretty cool thing. Josh, um, you know, I've noticed in the early part of the show, I mean, we have two really special guests on the show, world champions. You've been awfully quiet. You got anything you want to ask? You said you have 400-some-odd questions for Mel, but uh, it seems like... <laughs> 
Maybe well, Garrett, you kind of came out of the gate. You're you're hogging the mic. I'm it's a hot start, thing. Josh. You're, I'm hogging the you're, mic. You're spiced up. You're talking with hot your hands. Start. You got the green scheme growing. Yeah, like I think uh, this is sharp cuts. We're being too nice again. So I'm gonna make my first sharp Woo-hoo! cut. Of Let's go, I buddy. Let's Felipe, go. He understands technical, tactical. He understands that really well. Garrett, he has no baseline call. We've never run lines of practice. The guy doesn't understand like the physical punishment that needs to be oh, involved. Oh wait, in Felipe. Practice. Felipe, like you and Oscar, I know you guys got that baseline call. Anyone who's coached in the OCAA knows how to run lines. So you mean like, the end line Felipe? call? Like Felipe's we're doing, never we're doing done a running the, drill. The punishment thing. Yeah, no, he's never. Yeah, he can't spice it up too much. Mm, he's a little <laughs> softy, hey. <laughs> yeah. So do you think us chirping him is going to fold him up completely and actually help with that, or just like even soften it further? Like now he's going to be in his head every time. Oh, we should probably should run lines here, but ah, oh, man, but I, oh, I don't know. Can I do it? This is so interesting because uh, at York, I mean, there was a lot of line running under Mr. Wally Daiba. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that much. So I'm definitely familiar with <laughs> with doing 10 up until there's no skin left on your hands. <laughs> it's not, 10 up. Okay, so 10 yeah. up is not 10 up. It's no, how it's may I say up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, Clearly you're scarred. Okay. <laughs> why you don't do it. So maybe that's why Mel doesn't mind having Felipe around at practice because he's not actually making anybody work that hard or doing any sort of punishment going on. <laughs> no, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's the one that you want on your team for sure. <laughs> but you also need you need a pusher as well. I agree. Who's and your think- pusher, Mel? Uh, me. I'm the pusher. No, I No, who uh, is your pusher? Who is my pusher? Oh, I have to say my teammate. Sarah. Sarah Pavin. She pushes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like she, she's the one, hey, you got to pick it up. Like, let's go. You got to deliver type thing. Yeah. But like in a very like respectful oh. and teammate kind of way, supportive way. Um, she doesn't make me run lines, but she definitely <laughs> holds me to a high standard. That would be amazing. That would be team. wild. <laughs> Mel, get on the end line. Okay, you didn't dig that line shot. Go do a few end lines, okay? Then come back. Honestly, I probably should though, but um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's uh, in each pair that would? I feel like Semenov and Leshnikov have made each other run lines before based on their actions on court. That's my pick for somebody who would like bully their partner. I would watch that show. I would watch that partnership. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I bullied a few partners for sure. I mean, it's got to be. A, uh, hey, Mel, listen. If we see at the Olympics, if Sarah blows something, just to hey, go do a few end lines on the side there. We will all know what was going down there. We'll know. We'll be in your head. You got Garrett May's orders. You need to run some lines. Now nah, that Garrett. that won't work. If it's Garrett May's orders, she'd be like, "Who's that guy? I don't even know who you're talking about." <laughs> The yes guy gaming guy? He's not even a volleyball guy to the kids anymore. He's the video game guy. Yeah, like, no, <laughs> who? That guy? He's washed up? No. He, he Wait, might. He, yes do you guy. play? Yeah, like, I'm going to get game? that question. I'm going to get, did you play? Eh, unclear. <laughs> I think I remember, was this you, Garrett? Um, you were showing me a toaster game. Was that, is that right? Yeah, I mean, that's a throwback. So you're it really digging throwback. deep into the annals of yes guy gaming history there. I appreciate you, you remembering that. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just trying to maybe boost some of those numbers, but that toaster game looked super fun. Yeah, it was. It was not. Um, <laughs> it was not. Uh, I, I've I've pivoted though, Mel, and I don't know if this is even not, like something that pe- volleyball players think about, but I do mostly volleyball video games now. Wow, did not know that. There's a lot of them out there. Are you serious? Oh yeah. yeah. But ha- which ones? <laughs> Well, I mean, there, there's a lot of them. I could list them all. No. <laughs> no, don't do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a ton right. out there. I'm surprised. Are Felipe, you don't, you're not playing in those volleyball games? No. I mean, there was a time when, what, at York when we would, like, hook up the TV in the locker room and play. Was that the old, super old school beach volleyball one? Uh, right. Side Out? Oh, Side Out. Yeah, that's even older school. I think we played Side Out, yeah. And, like, we had, like, hardcore York tournaments in the locker room with uh, – just on on the on the TV with our with no. The see, I don't think I could do that. It doesn't sound. I've always had trouble with the controllers and trying to manage my little guy. It doesn't do what I want it to do. I just can't. Like it doesn't work for me. Yeah, and I think that's totally forgivable, Mel. We've seen you dig a few line rolls in your day, so I think not being able to do that is totally totally fine. <laughs> see, I'm disappointed though because there is a game called Power Spike, and Mark Heese and John Child are in the game. Friends, wow. of, friend, they are in the game. I and, think I'm aware of this game. Yeah, they're in it. And so like, okay, hey, it's 2021. Canada has the women's world champions. 
Melissa, you might not put us. Sarah Pavin. That is a team you have on the cover of your damn video game. But where yeah. is it? Where is it? Is where that is that? Right? Somebody needs to make that. And would you endorse that, Mel? Like, if they come down yeah. and say, hey, we, uh, we want to sell everyone's likeness for a volleyball video game, like, w would you be like, yeah, let's do it? 100%. And I think you need to be that person that makes it, personally. Oh. Oh, and there it is. There it is. The real reason we're on the show together. Aha! Uh -huh. This was your plan all along, Whoa. Garrett. I mean, listen, an endorsement from Melissa is <laughs> is a big deal. So I'm not going to say that it's like it is sharp cuts. We were kind of maybe supposed to cut a little deeper than this, but damn, I will take it. Wow. Hey, you heard it here folk, first, folks. Melissa Humana Paredes thinks that I should make a volleyball video game. I think we can move on, Josh, because I think, I, I mean, we're, are we done? I think that's that's really all I... That's really all I needed out of this. Yeah, you might as well get to work right now. Start promoting that. And <laughs> I will. I'm done. Well, so later. Back, back to Felipe. Oh, we right. can include Mel Sorry. on this too, but uh, Felipe, we, we have this room at Downsview. It's called the, the smart room, Garrett. Uh, it, it's where we do a lot I don't of stats in there. And, uh, metaphors and similes and numbers. There's just like formulas on the wall on the whiteboards and stuff, actually. Yeah. But uh, Wait, one so, thing that Felipe, so who's allowed in the smart room? You have to be smart. So who? It's, so of the four of us, who's getting in that room? <laughs> well, there's two of us that are there on the regs. Uh, I don't think Mel's ever been in there. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Chirp! This is sharp cuts, but whoa! This take it back cuts. a notch, Felipe. Which room is this? I've definitely been there. It's the old <laughs> coach's <laughs> office. That no, Felipe no, it's the smart room. You've like never been in there. It's okay, stuff. Mel. I haven't I been either. <laughs> Steve's old office. Oh, I haven't been in there. <laughs> see? See? Anyways, Garrett, one thing that we were charting, it was always fun going into events, is like Felipe would figure out that like, oh, this Latvia team, they need a ninth to pass this team and this team and all oh, sponsor clays. And we were figuring out the math. And Melissa, I'm wondering because you and Sarah won worlds. You were already in the games. Were you getting in on this points battle? Because there were some really tight ones going to the last tournaments where me and Felipe are just nerding up being like, well, if this team medals and this team takes lower than a ninth, but then this team can pass them. It was so fun trying to learn the points game. Oh my gosh. Okay. First of all, I am not the points person of our team. Like the calculations of like, like that's just not me. I just kind of like show up and play volleyball. Sarah's definitely the points person. But that being said, the last couple tournaments in Sochi and Ostara, the last two Olympic qualification events, I was invested. I know I was already qualified, but I was invested in what was happening. And like, I was trying to keep up with this game. I remember I was watching um, Poland against Latvia, the men's and Kantor Lozjak needed to beat some Moilovs and Smedins, or it was just like head to head. It was wild. And I was sitting there on the sidelines. I've never been so nervous before. I'm literally, I don't like, I couldn't, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I do care about both those teams very much, but <laughs> I wasn't invested, but I was so nervous. I was like sweating and I was like yelling. I was standing. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I couldn't control myself. Um, but then it's also really different when you're kind of in the middle of it as well. So like we had to play Carrie and Brooke who needed oh. And, you know, when you're there and saying we, we also had to play um, Sponsel and Clays in, in Cancun and they needed results, too. And so you're there and you're like you're also like kind of in the middle there. And Is that in your head? Like, oh, if I bury these people, they're Olympic they're It'll hurt their Olympic chances. It, it can be if you let it. But like once the game starts, you're there like you're you're in it. You're competitive. I like I forget about it. But then after you're like, oh, my God, what did I just do? <laughs> um, but yeah, but th then you see it even watching. We were watching the qualification matches in uh, in Ostrava. There were some big upsets. It was just nuts. It was crazy to see people, one, either like completely rise to the occasion and like take that pressure on and like perform when they needed to. That was really, really incredible to watch as an athlete because you understand what's at stake. And it's also really disheartening to see, you know, some people, their dreams kind of like unfold before their eyes and like not really be able to step up or, you know, you're watching these teams who's watching a game because their fate depends on the outcome of this game. And it's just, it's a, it's a roller coaster of emotions. And I was very invested. Like just as you were in the smart room, I, I was just like all over the place. Okay. Well, Mel, it sounds like you and me, we don't want to be in the smart room. Okay. If the smart room <laughs> is for all that math, I think we're going to get out and play some volleyball instead. But actually, when you, you got to answer some trivia to get through the door, and, you got to answer like three riddles. I'm screwed. I'm I screwed. give up. Yeah. I give up. It's fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it does lead me to, the other, the thought of okay, these ten situations, absolutely. Um, but we're we may have one coming up for Canada 
that we're all kind of paying attention to potentially, right? It's those those four men got to go down there. They got to get a big win for Canada to earn a spot. Now, we've seen this match happen played before. I mean, if we earn the berth, then they, you got to play head-to-head, sudden death to see who goes. I mean, obviously, you guys are going to be watching that. What are your thoughts around that? They might play it. Josh, can, do we have an update? Are they playing that in Mexico? Like, that's going to be Confirm. so nerve-wracking for all of us. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell us. you. It, it, it's happening in Mexico, Garrett. I tried. I tried to get it in Springwater, wherever your dad's living. Uh, I, we, we tried just to couldn't... get it in the May backyard. Oh. Yeah, it didn't you work. You know, there's eh? things about vaccinations and quarantine, and, like, could they play it there? Could CBC set up in the backyard? What do the neighbors think? We had to move a tree and stuff. Like, we couldn't get, like, permission to be there. So we just settled. They're going to play it in Mexico the day after Continental Cup. My goodness. That's wild. The Thunderdome. Well, it's going to, is it is it at a Thunderdome? No, it might as well be. Uh, is it at I, least I, Thunderdome adjacent, like nearby a Thunderdome. I don't know how true this is, but I've heard like other countries describe it as like just a a brutal process, like uh, just so so savage. Just two teams battling it out for that one spot, whereas and a lot of other federations that kind of have it laid out already. Who's going to be going if they if they get get a spot? Well, I've been witness to two of these like head-to-head matches. Um, yes, we have. Like, and those are, they're not easy on the heart. Um, Wait, those well, are, we've had three in Canadian volleyball history, right? Yeah. We have. Right. Josh, you're, the, hey, smart room yeah, guys, so, let's go. So Josh and Martin would have played Christian and Ben that first year, and Heather and Liz would have played Annie and Marie Andre yeah. in year one. And then the next year, uh, that was London, right? And in Rio, the women qualified through the top ranking, so we only had the men's side where it would have been Sam and Josh versus Grant and Sam. And that one was a heartbreaker because uh, one team was up 13 11 in the third and couldn't close the door. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> So we've had three in Canadian volleyball history. We're hoping for a fourth, but that yeah. fourth is not going to be on Canadian soil. It's going to be down in Mexico. Are we going to be able to watch Josh? Uh, we, we're, we're trying. We're trying, Garrett. Nothing's been confirmed as of right now. Felipe, you got to work some inside stuff there, buddy. What is even the point of being in Volleyball Canada if you can't make that happen, bud? We might send Felipe. Let's start this rumor right now, Garrett. We're going to send Felipe, and he's going to Facebook Live it. We have to follow <laughs> Felipe to get access to this game. We have to speak it into existence. Felipe just on the sideline with the smartphone up, like just. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. packing, I'm packing my sunscreen already. That's a fun time. We need right to there. start the trend. Hashtag Facebook Felipe to get him down there. <laughs> the alliteration. Kind of Facebook out, Felipe. Like Facebook with a PH. Hey, what kind of bird is that? Oh, that's neat. And then comes yeah. back to the game. I would watch that for sure. I, hey, I would watch that. Felipe, commentary too, or are you going to be silent? Oh, definitely commentary. I mean, I, I learned from the best. I know that having uh, a Mr. Garrett May as a, not a commentator per se, but an announcer at mm. a few tournaments on Ashbridge's Bay. Uh, and Edmonton. Oh, yeah, I wasn't there Edmonton, that, FIVB. He moved go. up, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, who is this Garrett May guy? Sounds like a really awesome announcer, commentator. Um, listen, I'll, if you, hey, yeah. if this, if a webcast happened, Josh, you got to get us on it, man. Come on. Mel's going to be Sounds watching. Like we got to put on a show. <gasps> no. Very true. Anyway. So, I, I mean, obviously it's a heartbreaking situation. Mel, yeah. I, I assume you're going to try to tune in from, um, oh. Europe, wherever you are. Felipe though, you maybe have a little bit of inside info. Cause you, I don't know if you've been working with any of these guys, you kind of been the scouting reports, stuff like that. I mean, yep. what can we expect maybe from this game? And uh, I mean, if people can tune in, should they? Or is it going to be too too upsetting? <laughs> I mean, I get emotional. Yeah, right. Well, I think step one, uh, and Josh is well aware of this too, is is getting to that game in the first place. And there are a couple of strong Mexican teams mm-hmm. in the way that Josh and I have been scouting. Uh, and they didn't play that many tournaments this year. So it's kind of like they're kind of like training in the shadows. Even more in the shadows is Cuba, which can be can be interesting. We never know uh, who they have. They're, they're very much uh, a dark horse and that there's not much to scout there. But you know they're going to be athletic. Like, you know they're going to be able to, like, jump super high and move super fast. Yeah, so you don't yeah, want to give so up too much of your scouting report, eh? <laughs> so Felipe, actually, I have an update for you. This is very unprofessional. I should tell you through an email. But uh, did you know that Norseka, you don't have to claim your teams until the day, like they won't check. That's find out who 
but it, who like Nico Wagra is like we don't know who the teams are until like the day of the tournament. Uh, and the other thing is they changed the rules due to COVID. You don't need an eligibility requirement. You need to be eligible to go to the Olympics. So the team who eventually goes has to be like eligible. But Cuba too could literally be the two most athletic people there who just have never played beach volleyball before. Send it could be everybody. Anybody. Send everybody <laughs> down there. Send the entire cohort. Hey, you don't know who we're playing. We could play anybody. That's exactly what a scout wants to hear. Exactly. So I'm like, so we can't even like YouTube the team. We don't even know who it is to like, let's say the tournament starts on Wednesday. We find out Tuesday who they are. Well, it can only be Olympic eligible teams though. No, like anyone can play in this. The what? team who wins. Like, so Cuba can send two teams, win it, and then send another team to the game. <laughs> What kind of Norseka rule is that? Wait, that's strictly Norseka rule? Oh, I'm not surprised. So, like, uh, it's only the team you send has to be eligible. The teams who play don't have to be. Yes. So I'm going to put the vote in right now, Josh. Forget Sam and Ben and Grant and them. It's me and Felipe is who you want playing in that match. Okay? (laughs) Me and Felipe are going to go down there and earn that berth for Canada, and we'll happily say, job done. You guys go to the Olympics now. I mean, I'm totally I'm, legal. Yeah, I've probably been watching more video on these guys than uh, yes, than the players. We got so. smart room Felipe, and we got coming yeah. out of retirement Garrett. <laughs> Felipe's so prepared; he knows what Ontiveros had for lunch today. That's how much we're observing these guys in their natural element right now. Wow, I mean, that's I mean, that's next level. What did he have for lunch today, Felipe? Josh is. I mean, what is it? I mean, it's it's pure speculation, but I can only assume. <laughs> Based, based, I'm extrapolating on what I know from the past, and I can only assume that uh, that there's rice and beans on the plate somewhere. <laughs> wow. I mean, this smart room seems like a big deal, Mel. Like, it seems like there's some interesting shit that goes on in there. I want to get it invited. We have an entire wall that's like a, a whiteboard. It's very much like a beautiful mind kind of situation. It's like, write in mm. any thoughts you want right there. I love that movie. It's kind of wild to think about... Uh, a- a big whiteboard about beach volleyball. Like there's only four players on the court. Like how complicated (laughs) can it be really? But I guess, I guess, no, this is a great opportunity. So Mel, have you gotten a scouting report from these two? I have gotten. Yeah. 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 You've sent charts and video and information. Yes, I have. So I I don't mean to call you out, but I'm the sound. You said you to think about it probably means you're not looking at it. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) I definitely, definitely am. I have received many scouting reports over the course of my career. Um, We do have, you know, someone that we work very closely with. However, this year specifically, um, since, you know, Felipe and Josh have paired up, I've been getting definitely more feedback from them, especially when we're on different time zones. Um, They've been able to help us out while we're sleeping. And then we wake up in the morning, we have this stuff in our inbox. So it's fantastic. Um, but, but yeah, but been, you don't really read it because it's I, from I'm Felipe. A <laughs> I'm a visual learner, so I like the videos right. and I can just like get my cues from there. No, I, yeah. hey, I get it. If I'm getting a scouting report from Josh and Felipe, that's going straight into the delete part <laughs> of the inbox. In fact, I've got email rules to just, yeah, send that. See, ya. Yeah. I don't need it. But, uh, I, I was going to ask, you know, is that helpful? Like what, what kind of value do you get out from the, cause these guys are working hard. They got the smart room. They got the beautiful mind going, you know, you're getting that on the, on the far end. And obviously you're having success on the world tour. You and Sarah, our other Canadian teams are doing pretty well. Like what is the value in beach volleyball of that stuff? Maybe Felipe, you can jump in there as well. Cause you're making the damn thing. But I, yeah. I am curious can, Mel's thoughts. Like yeah. as a player, are you getting stuff yeah. that's actually making a few points difference in your match? Yeah, can we get a serious answer on this one, Gary? You're kind of ripping into like my whole profession right now, and I'd like some serious <laughs> feedback here. I asked a question. It. It's a good question. I, what do you mean it's serious? Yeah. yeah. Did I? Am I? All right. Yep. Okay. Sorry. You would serious delete without answer. reading. Yeah. I think was the comment. But serious. anyways, back to Melissa. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. The real professional, the one that's still playing. Um, <laughs> oh. But oh. It is sharp cuts, right? Sharp cuts. I was under the impression this was this was another podcast i did not know this was sharp cuts oh it's Um, sharp cuts all right and after that it's even deeper cuts (laughs) (laughs) um however uh back to your question yes there is tremendous value in in scouting reports and okay mel he did say a serious answer 
What? He did say a serious answer, though. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Tremendous value. Are you just saying that because they're here or are you serious? Like it's seriously tremendous value. No. Like, no, I'm serious. And like before I partnered with Sarah, um, I didn't really watch a ton of video or kind of analyze the game this way. Or, you know, my perspective of the game was very much just kind of like you show up and you play and you just kind of figure it out during the game. But when you're playing at this level and when you're competing against these teams who are so, so they're, they're next level and everyone's got their whole support team working on one game as well, like it's be it's become a chess game. And so like you said it yourself, Garrett, like what these reports do is they allow you to get two to three points in a match. And those are the points that you need. Okay, I was going to ask like, how many points you thought, but two to three, you think per set or per match? Um, I think our team, we definitely, I'd say we would earn more. Um, I think we're historically earn more without the scouting report. Sorry. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. We we typically, you know, defense is definitely one of our high points. And so all the little tidbits of information we get, whether it's like cues that they're giving us, their body language, um, their tendencies, or if it's like set plates that we want to run, looking at like what they what they favor, what areas on the court. If we just have that in the back of our mind while we're playing, we can kind of elicit certain um tendency to come out as well based off of what we want to do so we're constantly communicating and so i say maybe even like five to six points like we could get like if we're starting out yeah wow i mean that's got to be glowing feedback for you two guys i'm surprised i'm not just seeing good, full Garrett. celebrations happening on on Too either shy. side of this call here are you kidding me five well, to six points said, we're taking like 10 percent credit max like maybe it's one percent credit garrett like the, the way the u.s scout explained it to me when i was picking his brain it's like we're trying to write like this 30 page essay for mel to read like one sentence that's really what it comes down to is like how much information can the athlete retain and still be in like flow state because we don't want her thinking about like oh this athlete hits a bunch of cut shots and then she keeps getting beat on a baby uh, like a baby line because we told her the cut shots coming right like we still want to be in a flow state we just want to identify what we know they do really well and how can we make them beat us with something else? You don't want to leave a game and be like, man, Garrett hits cross a lot, and he did exactly that, and he beat us with it. We want to make you do something else, right? Well, nobody yeah. seemed to, but... Um, <laughs> so, I'm Mel, like, because we got a chance to watch you play a lot in Cancun, um, which is not something we often get because it's the time zone's different, and you got to work. Like, the games were at prime time, so after work on the weekends, we could watch you play, which was fantastic. So um, I'm glad you guys were playing on Saturdays and Sundays. I appreciated that. I don't. I didn't. I probably should have led the show with that. So thank you for giving us that opportunity. People in the chat were loving it. It was a great time. Um, but you know, you're listening. You're watching the announcers going. You know, okay. You know what an excellent read there by Melissa Umana Paredes. And I'm going okay. Like I'm looking at a play where you chase down a line roll, dive and dig it, get up and pound. And I'm going. Yeah, amazing. Like, okay, well done. But then I'm looking at a play where it's like an X play, the blocker jumps angle, you're running line, you make a dig, and then and everyone's oh great read, like amazing great, read. Great, great I'm going, read. I'm going, okay, that, <laughs> not that, but I'm curious, where does the scouting come in for those types of things? Because I'm sure there's some that I look at and go, Oh, they like, okay, they just but we're actually you're making a play based on some stuff you've seen. Definitely, yeah. And I think like with Sarah and I specifically, like Sarah um, the way her mind works when she approaches games is pretty crazy. Like she's she's very strategic. Um, she's constantly thinking about what to do next, and we're constantly talking every single point. So like it'll it'll get to a point where we'll be at the service line, and and we'll, we will know exactly where we want to serve to and where we want to serve from to elicit a certain pass. And then when that pass happens, we know what the tendency is going to be. So this is the play we're going to run. If that doesn't happen, then this is the play we're going to run. So it's very specific. It's very technical. Um, and so. Yes, like a lot of the times you'll see us run plays. That's not by fluke. Like everything is, it's like it's very, very pointed and and directed, and it's like all communicated prior to. Like our timeouts, we're always talking about what we want to do in the next play, what we want to do in the play after that, um, and what we might do one play. Um, we'll say, Hey, let's do this on the two ball. And then after the third time she's done this, then we're going to switch it to this. And so like, that's all given to us by feedback we've gotten from reports and from scouting and from our staff's people and, and from our coaches. And that's kind of all put in the game plan. But 
not to also diminish what we have to also figure out while we're playing. Mm Because sometimes people Mm -hmm. deviate from game plans and you have to make it up as you go as well. So you have to adapt on the fly. You have that information in the back of your mind. You know, look, this is what her tendency is. She's not doing this anymore. So she's doing something different. Like Josh was saying, you want to make a player feel uncomfortable, go away from their tendencies. Um, That way you kind of feel like you have control of the game as well if you're making a player do something different. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. can I just request that we only keep this video private to Canadian viewers until the Olympics are over, just so no other teams can listen in on this uh, this strategy talk? I'm giving you all of my secrets. I, I I would say those are insights, not necessarily secrets, because all you basically just said there, Mel, is we take a scouting report and make a game plan. Um, <laughs> I mean, such a watered down version of what she just said. No, I mean she's given us her insights, her perspective. But like anybody listening to this, are you 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 really thinking like oh, Mel's game plan against you is going to be different than somebody else is going to be different against somebody else? Like that's the point. Yeah. Now, it, what is your right. game plan against this? No, okay, no, we won't get <laughs> we yeah. won't get into that. Obviously, but I am. I mean, I'm glad you spoke up, Philippe, because I was going to ask you because obviously you're making these scattering reports for everybody for each game. Do you tailor what you're putting in there? You know, because Mel and Sarah are taking something different from what you give them compared to, um, you know, Brandy and Heather, compared to Sam and Sam, compared to Ben and Grant. Uh, Are you tailoring what you're sending them to what you know this team needs, wants? Most definitely, yeah. Uh, And that's something that that, uh, Josh imparted his, his wisdom on me, uh, reg- like about wisdom. went early in our in our partnership. Yeah, wisdom. You got wisdom, Josh. <laughs> every <Yeah>. team, <laughs> every team needs different things, and, and uh, I know for a fact that Ben and Grant uh, asked Josh in particular for a lot of uh, information on what the team does on defense. So, like, what are they trying to do to stop us? Uh, Mel and Sarah, for example, I actually do a lot of video work for them, so I'm cutting up uh, games of opponents and making sure I'm grouping together every single hit from the left side and hard driven balls first and then cut shots. So they can visually see tendencies as well as the usual report that I give them. Um, I know Sarah in particular really likes to, to see and, and find out where players get blocked more often, where other blockers have put them in trouble. And Josh and I are always looking for doppelgangers as well. So how did a team play against another super tall blocker and quick defender in the back? Uh, so I'm kind of always looking for doppelganger matches instead of maybe like two small mm. German uh, players that might not be the best uh, match like as an opponent uh, to to scout for if you know if you know what I mean. That's so cool, man. I'm so interested in this stuff. It was a part of my game that was certainly not there when when I mm. played. And I don't know, Felipe. Maybe you can, when you were playing with Christian, I don't know how much you were getting from that. Like I, like we 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 didn't get any of that. There was no video. Like. But when you think uh, about it, if you can stack up, like Felipe's in the editing room, like cutting up video. But if you can get like just a bunch of their attacks in a row, just to just yeah. see what they do, right? It's basically like you've watched the team play ten matches, but just watching the same player attack over and over again, you get that sense, right? I mean that that does seem like it could be huge. It's, yeah, it is huge. So like, you yeah, play a team like who you haven't played in a while, Mel say. And you're getting a bunch of video that's showing you not necessarily patterns or anything. Maybe you're looking at that, but you're just looking at the hitter actually hit 30 mm-hmm. times. You're immediately picking up on their style, their trends. You're kind of taking your analysis from that then, eh? 100%. Yeah. And I feel like that makes, like when I see it in real time, it just looks way more familiar. Like I'm not trying to figure it out on the fly. That's why sometimes those teams that you've never seen before are kind of the hardest ones. You have, they have no video because you're just, you, you're, you have no idea. Um, and like those teams that you have a good, you know, a good r- rapport with or a good rivalry with, those are the ones that you know inside out. Like you, you could kind of like, you can you can anticipate what they're doing. You kind of read them like a book. And so every time you play them, you can see people are trying to do different things because they know you so well. Um, but what was your question? <laughs> oh, that was my question. Well, you covered you it. fully answered okay. it and provided great insight. Uh, well, I know this is sharp cuts, but... I over-deliver. I damn, over-deliver. way to answer my question and then pretend like you didn't. And now it's back on me. Okay, no, wow. Um, <laughs> so I know you don't want to, like, reveal a ton of the secrets and the inside mm-hmm. stuff. And, I, hey, I mean, because hundreds, thousands of people are watching this. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Um, but I'm curious, because you're in the Olympics. You're building to that. You're doing some training. So how does that change then 
the the whole process, right? Because when you're in a tournament, you maybe play two or three matches a day. You maybe not have time to do all this, you know, for say an intense quarterfinal that you got to walk into and like you just got to deal with it. You played your your pre quarter and I hey like it's two hour three hours later. Get in there. But now at the Olympics, you have days yeah. maybe sometimes between matches. Like does that obviously you're gonna have to do things a little bit different. Yeah. We were lucky actually because a few years ago uh, at the World Championships, it was a similar format. And so we kind of have that. Okay, format so you guys where... are favorable in those conditions. Let's go. Let's go, Josh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, we're kind of really banking on that experience to kind of come through for us again. But um, yeah, I think. It, it allows definitely way more preparation for each game. I think when you're in an FIBB tournament, just in Ostrava, we had just a couple hours between our quarterfinals and our semifinals, and we weren't as prepared um, as we probably should have been for our right. semifinals. We didn't have a lot of time to yeah. recover, to eat, and then to watch the video, and we were warming up again, so that was tricky. But um, for the Olympics, you will have days to prepare for one game. So, you know, there are no excuses. And But also, it just makes you so much more confident in your ability to show up on the court. And, like, you know exactly what you're doing. You can prepare for every situation. Um, you can be super mindfully and physically ready. So I think that's a really cool thing that's different about FIVB that's uh, unique to the Olympics. Felipe going to be sending you, like, full essays, like 10 page on each team. He's going to have days in between. You guys are going to be working hard, eh, Josh? You got to be, you got a lot of work to do. Well, the time zone's going to help us a little bit where, you know, when she's sleeping, we're working, and now there'll be a little bit of an overlap. But uh, we've got a plan, Garrett. We're just not going to wait and see on this one. We've got a plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, like, yeah. I, I'm the lone man out here, and I'm feeling completely left out. <laughs> And you know what? <laughs> fine, fine, you three and your Olympic journey, brutal. I'll be sitting here you can watching. Make game plans for, for your video games. Listen, <laughs> nobody cares about that, Mel. That's I mean, I, you're being so nice, but I mean, we can cut deeply. Nobody gives a shit. Um, I'm going to be watching you on CBC and like trying to hope they cover the match and have a decent announcer on there. I think they're going to have some decent announcers on there. You know. Do you know yeah, them? Like, do you know that, or are you just hopeful? We we know one. Isn't it Marquis? Is yeah, it Meister's got got to be there for sure. Yeah, Mark for sure, and Claire Hannah. See, they're covered, Garrett. Oh, I I didn't even know that. Is that announced? How do you know that? Is that private information? I don't know if it's private information. Is it exclusive? <laughs> to, to, Did we just get breaking news here? on Sharp Cuts? Let's <laughs> go. Exclusive. I see I've been overlooked once again. I mean, I understand. You got Olympic bronze medalist. I mean, you got to you gotta make the call. I get it. Was there a second, Garrett, when Mel said that, where you were kind of like, is this the reveal where they tell me that I'm actually announcing it for the Olympics? There was, was not, fine? but how dare you go there and rub it in <laughs> and just press that button because it is a big red one sensitive area, Felipe. No, you were definitely a close second. Third, maybe you were you were up there. I was on nobody's radar, and that that's the problem, really. But the show the show is not about me as much as I continue to try to make it about me. <laughs> and I, what do you? Yeah, I, hey, if you're still watching, thanks for joining us. We're here with uh, we're here with the Humania Parade Die. Parade like that. that sounds better. Oh, oh, like oh, die oh. and dice. I mean, oh, if you were to write it out, you would do the s apostrophe, right? That would be it. But then you just say, yeah. Umana Paredes. That's it's it. It's tough. Am I saying it properly? <laughs> Is he saying it right? It's, it's close enough. Yeah, but we don't want close enough. We want... Yeah, like, uh, hey, we're it's striving for excellence here. We're talking about Olympic gold medal. I got to say your damn name right. Do you guys like when people try to put like a Chilean twist on it? Or would you rather we just say Humana Paredes? It's funnier when people try. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I appreciate the effort. Okay. Okay. So the U in mine is bad. Umania. I got. I get that. I got to get that better. Umania paredes. Yeah, I got to work on that. Umania paredes. The paredes is is just smooth. It rolls off. But the umania. I got to improve that. It's not a U. It's a U. Umania. Right. My Canadian ears are. It just thinks it's a U. Right. That's the problem. That's. I got to work on that. It's too many it's okay. oots and a boots bod is what the problem yeah. is. <laughs> oots and a, I mean, and a damn it. How's your dad doing? Hernan Humana. Big guy's doing good. 
Big guy's doing good. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Is he involved yeah. at all anymore with either of your volleyball? I think he's always involved in my volleyball, whether I like it or not. No, but I love it. Um, he is all, he watches every single game. He messages me constantly with feedback and with, you know, advice and just like nice words, but also like sometimes critical words that we all need. Um, but he's, yeah, he's. I can't he's imagine difficult. Hernan being critical. That is something that I, I have a hard time picturing. I kind of want an example. I can't picture any of it. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely does it in a Hernan way. Which I actually is. know a lot of people who took classes with your dad at York University who yeah. who say, yeah, like I got a bad grade, but it, this the comments were just so nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like he can he can critique you, but in such a nice way that it doesn't come off as criticism. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. So like, yeah, we're, we're fortunate. I mean, that it's, it's the funny thing about volleyball families, and we talked a little bit about this with some of the guests we've had on the show before. We talked about with the Saxons, obviously, because we had Ben mm -hmm. and Don on. They were chatting. Um, we talked a little bit about it with Mark, and then we had uh, Shearhorn, and they're, they're a volleyball family um, mm -hmm. yeah. in one of our previous episodes. They actually compete in the family. Like, they play each other. I don't know if that's anything you guys have ever done. You ever actually competed? Mm, I think the... Most we've done is like Volus warm up. Yeah, I'm great at it. Okay, so Mel's obviously winning Volus. I'm yeah. winning. I'm winning. He's winning short court though. It, well, I'm okay, court. but that, that's a tough. That's a tough one. I'm at a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but still, like you, you could beat Felipe in short court, couldn't you? Uh, I don't know. I need to work on it. Is Hernan but... getting in there? Like, is it or is it just you two who are able to compete at this point? At this point, I think his um, his mobility is not quite where it used to be. But before, he definitely was in on volleys. Oh yeah. Um, well, you guys, I mean, it's not volleyball, but they play basketball all the time together. He still hoops. Yeah. He uh, Garrett. I don't know if you know. He was like asked to be on the Chilean national basketball team, or at least try out for them. But he chose volleyball. So he like he has hooping skills. You should see his hook shot. It's unblockable unguardable it's, wow it's crazy i didn't know that do you dunk on him in retaliation or is he a great defender as well i mean when he when i get past him i can <laughs> but if he's, in front, <laughs> he's got like this like oh my god i'm not getting past that <laughs> really good dad love it so tell, that's can... that's wild like volleyball family you guys don't have that air of like just hotly competitive in your household which i'm kind of jealous of <laughs> mm. To be fair, when I was growing up, I was quite competitive um, at like the smallest things like, you know, running to the car first. I was always first. Um, I'd always have a head start or board, <laughs> board games. I would always cheat to win. Um, Blatantly cheat. Well, I had to win. Um, and he was just, like I said, you know, very patient and very patient with me and just kind of like he humored me. Um, I was the baby of the family, uh, the only girl, so yeah, super cute. And um, yeah. I, so has Felipe or Hernan ever just completely snapped? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> never. It's never happened. Josh, never. you want Felipe to get guy to do end lines, but he's literally never snapped in his life. No, it's probably like, guys, can we shag balls? No, no, you guys great water. I'm going to go pick these up. I'll go down. I got these. There was a time, do you remember? I think we were play fighting, but I didn't know that it was play fighting. And then, I thought, you know, you you and the other brothers, you guys were like pretend punching each other, but I thought it was real. And I came in and I punched one of them. Um, you don't remember that? I don't remember and this. then you punched me in the gut so hard after that. That was the one time he really blew up. How, but it was warm. How old were we when this happened? Mm, I think I was like eight or nine. Yeah. See, here, it'll forever be a stain on your record, Felipe, that you punched Melissa in the gut one time when you were 11. How dare you, Felipe, snap one time in your life? <laughs> it's there. It's, it's on the record. Josh, you got to yeah. tell the guys at practice, hey, look out, because Felipe's got a temper. He might punch you in the gut. Like, just yeah. be careful. Yeah. It's happened before. It's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right. Okay. Sorry. I, when you said it's happened before, I was like, wait, is Felipe actually <laughs> punching guys at practice? <laughs> I guess not. I mean, that's great and good for you guys, because, like, I mean, in my house, it was, just, yeah. it's, and it's still hotly contested. And uh, that was kind of, the Saxons, I think, were kind of the closest thing. I don't know how well you guys uh, know them, but they uh, they 
like they're so nice to each other, but also heavily competitive, right? Like it seems like with you guys, it's like, no, it's, it's genuine. Like you're, you're taking it, you know, genuine. Like if Felipe is cheering for you in a drill or something, you're not getting pissed. Are you? <laughs> no, I, no, no, I'm definitely not. Do you get pissed when I cheer for you? No, no. That, that didn't sound no. genuine. I get, I get embarrassed. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what Ben was saying, Garrett. He wasn't like mad that he was getting cheered on. He was mad that they thought that he needed that to be successful in the drill. I think it was more like he didn't enjoy like the pity context of it. <laughs> like it was a condescending cheer. Oh, you can do it. Come on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, didn't, he doesn't need that, Garrett. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to have that every once in a while, though. You know, like, I don't know. Like, Mel, is it going to make a huge difference? Like, because there's going to be no crowd in, in Tokyo. Like, you know, Felipe, we've been in tournaments, like even the one you're talking about when, when I was the announcer, we're having fun, like there's energy there, like that's not going to be there, right? Obviously, that's going to make some sort of impact. And I, I maybe need a little redemption because I said on a previous episode that it's going to be a big deal for all teams that there's nobody there and nobody was on my side. So, well, that okay. I, I am I am framing the question poorly, but um, well, so do you want me to be on your side or do you want the truth? Well, I obviously Ooh. want. Well, hey, uh, I mean, both. Okay. No. I mean, I want both. Let's, let's start. <laughs> and I'm actually curious about this, and this could just be I haven't done enough research, but I was under the impression that there would be some fans, they would be local Japanese citizens, just no international fans. Um, so maybe the stands will have some people, maybe not quite super packed. Okay. Uh, that's another breaking news, Garrett. I think that's an exclusive. I mean, listen, I didn't this know show this. is just, we're playing all the hits here. It could be fake news. It could be fake news. It could news. be fake news. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, better to be first know. than to be right, right? Uh, exactly. exactly. Maybe That's sayings about that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, uh, so I guess then at reduced capacity, mm. well, I mean, what would you prefer? Oh, I would prefer a jam-packed stadium. Oh, you would? I think back to, yeah, I think back to the World Championships in Hamburg, and we were playing in front of a crowd of 15,000 people in a yeah. um, beautiful stadium, and it really does make a difference, especially in beach volleyball, because the environment of beach volleyball is so much about the energy, you know, like you feel the vibes and that's like, that's the beauty of the sport. There's music, there's dancing, there's loud, there's cheering and stomping. And you feel that you're not like so far removed from the crowd that you don't feel it. Like you're right there. People are on your sidelines and you can hear the the cheering. You can hear your name. You can hear it. Sometimes you can hear the heckling, um, but that's just part of the beauty of it. And it does make you feel so much more engaged at times and you do feel like you have support if they're cheering for you which thankfully in Hamburg they were um you feel like you have like that extra help you know like a little extra push from the crowd and so it will be missed um that's you know not to be we, we there are times we don't play in front of crowds and and you know like our stands aren't always jam-packed at some of our tournaments so it's not like it's unfamiliar to us but having a huge crowd, especially at such a big event like that, does make a difference. Um, so is that on your side? Am I on your side? You absolutely <laughs> are so far, and I love it. So <laughs> smart room guys, are you taking that into account? Like when you're doing a scouting report, are you going, okay, here's a game where they played in a massive stadium full of fans. Here's a game where they played in the backyard of some guy named John May out in Springwater, Ontario. Like these are very different settings. Is this a, is this a factor? Am I, am I spoiling some sort of secret here? This is interesting. This might be uh might be something we it's a uh, new variable. We connect on offline, Josh. You're welcome. The answer you're looking for, Garrett, I'm is, hired. Is no, we haven't. I'm yeah, available, haven't guys. This. Hey, we consider weather. Uh, we consider doppelgangers. We consider uh, opponents. But yeah, size, crowd, who they're cheering for, good guys, bad guys. No, that's we're not there yet, Garrett. You okay. just you just added a new layer to this. Yes, mm -hmm. maybe Canada will be the first to do this. Next level, cerebral game. You scout who's good when they're being heckled and who's not. So you mm -hmm. can choose yeah. your chirp game to affect and have the most success. Very interesting. Do you chirp? I mean, do the Humana Pararistas chirp? <laughs> I I started chirping later on in my career, uh, but still not. I wouldn't classify them as chirps, but I would just kind of like always love to rub in some like cheeky points, mm -hmm. make sure that they know that I was really happy about it. Mm -hmm. and so like, when you're playing Monopoly at home and Mel's trying to cheat to win and you actually win, are yeah. you, you letting her know? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Like between us there is there's banter for sure. You know, we don't let anything go. But I think on the court, um, 
we're both a bit softies, you know? <laughs> like we're not we're not gonna be the one in Speak your face. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I mean, I'll agree that I'm not I'm not the one to get in people's faces, but I could I could be the annoying guy on the court every now and then. I could I could celebrate extra hard to to let people know that. Well, you're also annoying off the court too. That's not you know <laughs> like, but. But yeah, my, my chirping was always trying to to kill them with with kindness and just like laugh, kind of laugh at their mistakes and make sure that they know that I'm laughing at them <laughs> kind of situation. I mean, yeah. that's sometimes worse. And Mel, I got to be honest, I know I asked if you chirp, but I feel like you sometimes almost like compliment and cheer for the other team sometimes. <laughs> like, like, oh my God, you're so close. Yeah, like, oh, a great try. Like, I know that was my shot, but like, good try. Like, am I far off? No, you're not that far <laughs> off. You're not that far off. Uh, we do. I kind of or does it get heated? What's that? Do, or does it get heated? It can get heated. However, I have the added benefit of being the defender in the back row behind my partner, Sarah Pavin, who is, you know, she is my She's security tough. guard up there. She, you know, she will make eye contact at you across the net. And if you come at me, which has happened a couple times. What? You have to People have come at you? Oh, yeah. Like so physically. Yeah. Story time. Well, no, you know, like if they, if they like, if they block me and they scream at me, oof, you better believe Sarah is going to block you back and scream at you 10 times louder. Um, <laughs> so I have her, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you go Sarah. You, I'll encourage her, you know, up there. And I, I, I encourage like the intense Sarah to come out and, and yeah, her stare downs, pretty iconic. Um, I, I love those stare downs. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely encourage that. So I kind of egg her on. That's my way of getting involved, but I'm kind of in the back and I'm just kind of like, watching it all happen okay so we gotta um, keep an eye out for the sarah, sarah stare down if that ever comes you haven't up. seen it garrett well i wouldn't Make say i've experienced it you know like and, and the angle too is tough because like if you're you know not at the right angle it looks like they're just looking <laughs> over there right you have to look at the face to see the stare down like can you, <laughs> you tell know sarah's when you see it down like... right now like you don't really know <laughs> if i am right but when i look at you like this it's Ooh. like, oh, like, whoa, stop that, you creepy guy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, so yeah, I, I haven't really seen it. Watch so I'm for looking it, for it, it, though. Mm -hmm. Watch for it. I guess yeah. it must guess be legendary. Did she throw any of those in the world championships? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Are you Watch scouting the, the stare down, uh, The Netherlands, Garrett. There's a couple <laughs> good ones against the Netherlands. There are some people where it will come out again. I'm not going to name names. Maybe I will. No, I won't. I can't. I can't <laughs> Maybe I will. No, I won't. I might. No, I won't. Yeah, we don't. We try not to throw people under the bus here, but then we inevitably just totally do it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, please refrain. But we have done it a few times, throwing people under the bus, like I did with Felipe when I said that where, the guy said, "Where the heck is he?" That was a complete bus <laughs> throw under, because um, it sounds like you've been there the whole time. <laughs> Well, I actually didn't finish that that not interesting right. anecdote, but uh, I just was taking my time and tying things up in BC. And then when I got here, there was this whole 14-day uh, quarantine for traveling out of province that I had to deal with. And then I think I had one practice before uh, there was another positive case at the center. So was another two weeks without practice for everybody. So it kind of did turn out to be like months after I was announced to to be a coach before I actually started. Okay, so you, you have been committed. It's just you've been a little bit unlucky, and I, I see There's again to show people only listen to the first there. half of the show. They'd be thinking this Felipe guy doing scouting reports doesn't even show up to practice. So hope, if you're still listening, thank you so much for listening. I don't think some of our players have met him yet, Garrett. I don't know. He's kind of a ghost. Is that a joke or is that serious? Because I'm, kidding, I, I'm so kidding. I need to so know kidding. because then I was right to throw him under the bus. No, 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 no I've, I've met everyone. <laughs> I have met everyone. Hey, I mean, we were talking with Jen Cross, who you know well, uh, Melissa, from back in the day in Portugal, uh, former beach partner of yours. And she said on their team indoors, when they got to Italy, they hadn't even met half their team. What? Really? Yeah, like they hadn't even met each other, some of them. So, hey, I mean. I'm confused. How, does that, how is that possible? Well, you got the seniors and then the up-and-comers, right, coming to join the team for the, the thing, and then they meet for the first time because I guess they had some retirees, so... They had about seven retirements at once, and then when they brought in some new athletes, because VNL, you can have a pretty big roster, like 16 or 17 athletes, so, yeah, some of them did not know each other. Wow. Confirmed. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, could you imagine playing a beach tournament with somebody you just met that day? 
I think it's happened, but uh, no, I don't think it's it happened with who? Who did you play in a tournament with the day you met them? I have well, done it for sure. I've played with like 40 people over the years, so I have definitely done that. I think well, it's closer to 14. We do trivia at practice sometimes, Garrett, and I think you've had a few partners. Well, oh, I'm not talking just FIVB too. partners. Like, I'm oh, talking yeah, yeah. like, all, you know, you show up at a regional tournament one day and you're like, you need a partner, right? You know those days. You remember that, Mel? Like, you need yeah. a partner. And you 100%. just call up whoever, like, hey, you want to play? And uh, maybe you don't know them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I can I can relate to that. I just want to, we're getting kind of like the this rainbow circle of death on my computer. So if we do crash out, um, that's Well, why. you know what? I think that's a great sign because we have, the show has run its course and your computer is giving us a clear signal <laughs> that we are destroying <laughs> your technology with whatever nonsense has been going on here. So um, I still think- still don't know how to close the show yeah we still we're still figuring it out any suggestions for how to close the show i watch uh uh, i listen to a podcast comedy bang bang and they always finish off every episode with plugs so just like all the guests can plug whatever projects they're working on or their their handles uh uh youtube channels for example so let's do a plug let's go around the table felipe may be selfishly wanting us to end the show this way so he can plug something but i don't mind felipe do you have anything you want to plug you start uh i don't know why i suggested this because i really don't (laughs) (laughs) okay i'll start then i have a youtube channel um (laughs) it's at melissa jimena paredes um you just type it in and and it'll pop up it's lifestyle based and so you know i vlog behind the scenes of what it is to be you know a professional athlete and then i vlog um you know a skincare routine sometimes what i eat in a day um you know we're branching out um so give it a subscribe and a like and and you know we got a collab in the future, Mel, 100%. is what needs to happen. You got about 2,000 subscribers. I'm closing in on seven. We've got to make some stuff happen together. We got to get Sarah, who's got, I think, 30,000. So we, we've we got to just combine all of the forces and get moving. This YouTube, this YouTube game is no joke. I've been trying to push my content on my social, and they're just not grabbing. It's a different world. It's, it's a game, not, and you got to play it. It's not meant for me. What? Okay. But well, it helps have people by your side, and I'm happy that we had you on the show, Mel. Look at this, right? Future, the plug works. Josh, you got anything you want to plug? Or I, I don't know. I mean, that was a pretty good one. Well, I'd like to thank the fan for still listening, Garrett, because we mentioned on last week's episode that we would read the comments on the uh, either if they comment did on the podcast that? or on the YouTube channel. And we we said we would read the comments, but don't worry, Garrett. I just checked. We did Zero read the comments. comments, so we don't. We did read the comments. We did so. that. <laughs> Thanks to the fan for participating, and uh, <laughs> we'll keep oh, thinking of different oh, ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I have nothing to plug because if you're watching this, I mean, you already know. Thank you so much. Uh, and th- hey, thank you too for coming on. I mean, it was fun. It's always a blast chatting with you guys. And I mean, Mel, if we don't talk to you, good luck. Bring home some damn hardware. It's about time. Here we go. Let's do it. Thanks that, for having us. And Felipe so better have a great stuff. scouting report for every match. A hundo P. Hundo P. Nice. Well, thanks you guys for joining us and uh, that'll do it.